Okay, so in this video, we're going to go into some slightly deeper detail in terms of editing live 360 imagery. So we've got a pre-stitch 360 by 180 image here that is lacking detail at the bottom pole. So to enter the live projection, we can go to layer, live projection and equirectangular projection. Okay, then we can click drag around our 360 image. So first things first, we are going to get rid of this lovely red text on the notice here. And what I'll do with that is just go in with the clone brush and let's take the hardness down to 0% and increase the brush size. And then in addition to zooming in on the field of view, I'll actually zoom into the canvas further and just clone out the red text. So being able to use the healing tools and the clone brush is pretty useful for architectural and real estate photography. Then of course, back to the move tool, we can choose edit live projection. We'll punch out the field of view and also zoom out. And the other thing we want to tackle is the bottom pole here. Now with some images, you can get away with filling in the detail in the bottom pole by using in painting or cloning. However, looking at the fine grain detail and reflectiveness of the table here, this is not really going to be a reality for this image. So instead, let's do something quite unique and add a copyright or a logo to the bottom pole, as that's quite a popular thing to do. So let's settle on this view and then we'll go down to our quick shapes here and select an ellipse tool. And I'm going to start dragging it out and I can hold the modifiers to constrain and also draw from center. Okay, so we need to reposition this obviously, but there's our rough size. Then we'll use the move tool and just click drag it. So it's basically covering the detail that we don't want people to see. If we just hide it for a moment, we can see the underlying area that we're trying to conceal. So, so far so good. Now we're going to add a logo on top of this. And I've come pre-prepared with the Affinity Photo icon. So I'll go to Select, Select All, and Edit Copy. Then move back across to the image and Edit Paste it in like so. So at this point, I'm going to turn snapping on up here and that will allow me to align it to the center of the ellipse. And of course we can resize it. I'm using a modifier to resize from center here. About there ought to be all right. And then a white ellipse is a bit drab and basic, so let's see if we can add some colour. So I'm going to use the colour picker tool, and this is a really quick way of prototyping or quickly applying different colours to a vector object. So you'll see here it says apply to selection, it's checked. So let's try one of the red chairs, ooh no. What about the green? Nope. The Slight purple slash mauve, no. What about the mustard or custard down here? Perhaps not. What about the blue? No. I think out of all of these, I prefer the slightly purple color. But of course, we can always go into the color panel and tweak it separately, like so. And of course, it might be a bit dark, the overall colour, so I can hold shift and 
start dragging one of the sliders to move them all relative to one another, like so. And then just to finish this off, let's add to the background icon some outer shadow. Right, now we move to an important point. I'll just move back to the layers panel. These two layers are not aware of any equirectangular live projection going on. They're simply being applied relative to the view that we have at the moment. So that means were we to switch back to the background pixel layer and select the move tool and start moving around within our live projection, things are going to get ugly. So what we need to do instead is merge these two layers down destructively into our original pixel layer. So all we do here then is firstly right click the ellipse and choose merge down. Then right click the icon and choose merge down again. At that point we can then choose to edit live projection and our composite elements then become part of the overall 360 image. And of course at this point we can go to layer and remove projection. And this gets us back to our original unmapped 360 by 180 image. And uh, what it's done to the icon down here looks quite disturbing. But rest assured if we were to go in and re-enter the live projection, it appears as it should. So, there we go. Hopefully that's helped just to give you a few more ideas for editing 360 imagery. If you have any questions or queries, please do ask on the Affinity forums, and don't forget to check out the other video tutorials. Thank you for watching.